Ladles and Jelly Spoons, welcome back to Badgerworks. Today, this. <laughs> uh, this is another one of our airfix starter kits. It's the uh, Supermarine Spitfire Mark 1A in 170 second scale. And this is what we're going to be working on today. So, let's get on with it. Now, you will notice that I said in the introduction that we're going to be working on this. We're not going to be, I didn't say we were going to be building it. So, because we're going to try something a little bit different with this. So let's get out of the box and have a look at it. I mean, you've seen these before, but it never hurts to take another look. Uh, so obviously we've got the model itself. The brush they always give you. These brushes are actually quite handy. I keep these. Um, all the paints and stuff that we won't be using, but uh, my daughter uses these, so I've actually found a use for the piles of these that I've got, because now she uses them. Uh, what else have we got? There's the instructions. And usually the decals are right there in the instructions. So we'll have a quick look at these. Um, so we've seen these many times before. They're fairly basic. Um, I quite like these instructions. They're quite clear. So And there's really not many bits to this at all. So yeah, <laughs> it doesn't take much to build at all. But that's not what we're going to be doing. Let me put this to one side. Because we're not going to be building this kit. What we're going to be doing is displaying it. Now, follow me. The idea is, I've seen other people do this. This is not, I'm not claiming this is an original idea in any way, shape or form. Uh, I've seen other people do this with, with great results. And so I decided I'd have a go at it. But the idea is, if I can get these out of the bag, oh, I get the other bag out of the bag. The idea is you actually paint the parts on the runner and then put the runners in a display case like that and then frame it and hang it on the wall. So that is what I'm going to do. Now, I think this is going to be quite a lot of fun because <laughs> uh, in some respects, it'll be easier to paint while it's all in pieces. In other respects, it'll be a lot more difficult because not only do we now have to mask the model, but we have to mask the frame as well. And the other thing to think about is, do we actually spend some time because there are some mold lines and things like that on the frame? And I think we're going to need to clean those up too. So I'm going to start by spending some time cleaning up all these frames, uh, getting rid of any little bits of flashing and that that I can find. And then uh, the next thing I've got to do is measure this up and see if I can find a frame for it, get one ordered. And then while we're waiting for it to turn up, we can paint this. So I'll clean this up and then we'll come back and start painting it. Uh, so I've just been cleaning up some of these uh, frames and I'm still in the process of doing it. I'm trying because there's quite a lot of mold lines on the frames themselves, which is taking forever to clean up, but it is what it is. But one of the things I wanted to do as well, I've, I've been kind of umming and ahhing over whether to do this, but I think I am going to do it, is like, for example, this one, I'm going to have it displayed this way because I want the outside of the fuselage facing out. But the problem that we then have is things like you can't really see the seat and also um, the control panel in the cockpit because I'd like to put the because it comes with a, a, a where is it uh, there it is so this comes with a decal that goes on it and you won't be able to see it so I think what I'm going to do as well is I'm going to actually remove some of these parts from the the frames and I'm going to turn them around and so I thought I would just demonstrate quickly what I'm going to do just so you've got a bit of an idea. So the trick is I've got to get it off and turn it around and then stick it back onto the onto the frame. So for this one, for example, what I'm going to do is use my little JLC razor saw here because this is a stupidly thin blade. Um, and I'm going to cut across here and across here. But then I'm also going to remove because this, I don't know, it's a bit difficult to show you really. Um, but you see here, you've got this kind of like dog leg bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut that here so I can flip the whole thing around. So let's see if this works. What could possibly go wrong? 
Okay, let's see if we can do this. Now, the other thing I'm going to say, actually, while I'm doing this, you've seen me use this razor saw before, but what I'm going to do at some point in the future, a little bit of a spoiler for you, I'm actually planning on doing a video on razor saws and uh, like different ones and what you can use them for and so on and so forth. So you've got that to look forward to. Because I have several different razor saws. Right, that's that cut. Um, but uh, what I want to do is is like show why it sometimes helps to have more than one sort. Right, that's that cut. But you see there, hopefully you can see that, there's virtually no, you know, I, I think the blade on this is something like 0 0.15 millimeters or something like that. So it's absolutely tiny which means that I can cut these pieces off in such a way that I can um, reattach this without it, um, without it leaving gaps. So hopefully now I can flip that around and I'll tell you what I'm gonna do while I got that off, I'm just gonna clean up that end because it's got a big bubble in it although I think that might just be mismolded but anyway so what I'm going to do now is get some glue and try and glue this back on actually while I've got that off I'm going to clean this up quickly this is another it's one of these things you start doing this and after a while you're thinking why am I doing this because this because now I've not only got to clean all the parts but I've got to clean the frames as well <laughs> so once again it's like why, why am I doing this anyway we'll get there uh, tweezers would be helpful all right let's see if we can do this See, now I can flip that around and reattach it. And uh, that way you'll be able to see it. So there's a few other bits I'm going to flip round and um, then I'll finish cleaning it up. We'll prime it and then start painting it. Right, so just to show you, I have turned around the uh, focus. There we go. Uh, the control panel, the seat and the wheels. And on this other frame, I have flipped around the pilot so that he's not sitting there with his back to us. So I'll let those dry, carry on cleaning these up and then put some primer on. Right, so uh, I did the uh, the glass <laughs> first because that was the easiest. Um, so that one's done. So you can see I've, uh, as we addition to masking the glass, I've also had to mask the actual frame itself. Uh, that took about 20 minutes. And now I've got to do these two. 
So, I'll see you in a couple of hours. <laughs> Remind me why I'm doing this again. Anyway. Right, after much masking and taping and things, I've got both uh, frames done. So I'm going to start by doing basically the same as I would normally. I'm going to start with this uh, cockpit green and uh, start from the inside and kind of work my way out. Right. Well, that's the cockpit side of things done. Uh, I think what I need to do now is mask up the wheel wells and then move on to the next color. Right, and for the underside of the wings and everything, I'm going to use this JA Gray XF14. Right, and I think what we'll do next is start on the uh, camouflage. Because that's going to be fun. <laughs> Right, uh, so I've done a little bit more masking and now we're going to go for this XF52 Flat Earth. Stop laughing at the back. Right, so we'll leave this to dry, uh, then we'll do some highlighting and whatnot, and then we'll uh, do some more colour coats. Alright, now that's had a chance to dry, the next step is mottling with our old friend XF55 Deck Tan. Right, now we'll give that another lick over with the brown. Right. Now, I've probably mentioned this before, but when you're uh, doing this mottling, just be careful with it because when the when it dries, when the top coat dries, uh, the mottling will actually show through more. So you kind of have to go a bit further than you think, if that makes sense. So it's a good idea to apply a number of thin coats. and then let it dry for a minute and see what it looks like. Because you can see there now, you can see how that's still showing through quite a lot. So we'll give it a little bit more of the brown. And then let it dry again and see what happens. All right, 
Now, we'll give this a few minutes to dry, then we can do more masking and start putting the, uh, the green on. Okay, so time for more masking. And uh, I need to do the green now, so I need to mask up the camouflage. And for that, I'm gonna use this. Uh, this is MIG's uh, masking putty. You've seen me use this stuff before. You can get cheaper alternatives to this. This is really good stuff, but you can get cheaper alternatives. I did a video on this before. But uh, the nice thing about this stuff is it's really easy to use. So I'll show you quickly and then I'll do the rest. The funny thing is it's just trying to get it out of the, <laughs> out of the tin to begin with. Ugh. And a, a word of warning on this stuff, do not ever leave the tin upside down because this stuff will gradually settle. And when it does, it will grab the lid and you'll never get the lid off. So if you ever get one of these and you leave it upside down, or on its side or anything like that, you can't get the lid off. Just lay it flat for a, a, a while and it'll all sink down to the bottom and you'll get the lid off. But otherwise, it's a nightmare. Anyway, um, so I've got the box here so I can get a rough idea of what I'm doing. I'm not gonna do exactly the same as the box, but roughly. But the trick is with this is you just snap a bit off. And uh, so, and you just work this stuff. As I say, it's just like Play-Doh. Um, oh. And we'll have a bit there on the end. Like that. And you just, like I say, you just stick it on. One thing I will say is when you put it down, try and get it squeeze it down a bit on the edges like that so you get a fairly sharp line because otherwise it tends to go a bit fuzzy which if you want that that's another way to do it is put this on quite thick but if you put it on nice and thin like that you'll get a much more uh, well-defined line so I will put the rest of this on and then we'll have a quick look at it and then we'll put some paint on it right so that's it all masked up as you can see and uh, now we're going to hit it with some XF81 uh, RAF Dark Green 2. There we go. Uh, so the next step is same as before. So we'll use the um, the XF55 depth tan and do some mottling. And then we'll come back and go over it again with a thinned down coat of the, uh, of the green. Right, that's that all done. So now we can peel off this masking putty. And the nice thing about this is when it comes to unmasking, you just literally just peel it off like that. And it, uh, it just comes off in one nice lump. So we'll just get this off. And what we can also do is, um, unmask a few other bits as well. Well, I'm going to spray uh, the black parts next. So I've got to do a bit more masking because obviously, and uh, I'll just spray the black and then we're going to do some just detail work with a brush 
to do the wheels um, and things like that. But I think what I'm going to do is I'll spray the black first and then I can actually, I think, I need to stop and have a think about this for a minute because I need to make sure I'm doing it right. Uh, but I think pretty much once I've done the black, I can actually unmask uh, everything except the frame because the next step after that will be putting on the uh, decals. So that'll be fun. But there you go. So that's all our main color coats on, as I said, apart from the black, which I'm gonna do next. But the great thing about this stuff, now I took it off, you see it's got all paint in it. If you just work it around a bit, And you'll see that the paint just disappears. <laughs> it's it's uh, yeah, it's amazing stuff. I'm not, I'm not, you know, there's no. I'm not sponsored by these people. I bought this stuff, but it's um, it is amazing. But as I mentioned earlier, I did do a video on this and some other alternatives. So worth having a look. Uh, so next is black. So as I just mentioned, next step is this uh, XF85 rubber black. There we go. Now, uh, I think we can do a bit of brush work and then we can start thinking about putting some varnish on this thing. Right, so that's the uh, the pilot done. Um, focus, there we go. Um, yeah, figures are really not my speciality, certainly not at this scale. <laughs> um, so the next thing I'm gonna do uh, is I'm gonna give the whole thing a coat of this uh, X22 clear. Focus, there we go. And uh, then we can think about putting the decals on. Right, this is nice and dry now. So time for decals. Uh, I'm not going to go through putting all of these on because you've seen me put decals on before. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put one on the wing just to show you and then I'll do the rest off camera. So I'll just cut one out. And uh, tweezers would help. And I've got me Mr. Mark setter. And I've got some hot water here. You can just see the edge of the... This is the air wick wax burner that I use. If you don't have one, and if you're somewhere like me, where you don't have a ready supply of warm water, this thing actually works very, very well. So... We'll just set that aside for a second. Blow that on the wing. 
Now, where does it go? See, <laughs> there's not many decals with this, and the only guide you have is basically the back of the box. Um, but yeah, okay, so it's center on that. Okay. Like that. Now we get a cotton bud. Is that in the right place? Yeah, just about. All right. And let's get this. See, this is the kind of awkward bit of doing, <laughs> doing it on here, is it's quite difficult to actually get at it. But we'll manage. See, this is the trouble with these ones here, is where they fit, they're... Um, that's actually not quite in the right place. That's it. Where they fit, there's lots of bumps and ridges underneath it. But what I've done in the past, and I might do it on this one, is um, basically just take a scalpel and just put a slit in it. Yeah, I think I'm going to do that. Let me glasses. <sighs> yeah, see, it's this. Uh, I don't know if you can see it. It's that there. There's a little a little bump, and it's it's annoying because it's only on that one of the of the four gun covers. But it does mean that it. Uh, It um, doesn't really help when you're trying to do this. But what you can do as well, along this panel line here, is actually cut. The decal so that it sits in the panel line better. Uh, what I also have, if I can find it, is this Mr. Mark Softer. And what this does is it softens the decal so that it conforms better to the surface. So I think in this instance we'll give it a, a dollop of that. And we'll leave that for a couple of minutes and then uh, see if we can get it to sit a bit better. But uh, I'll do the rest of these decals and then um, we'll come back and look, see what it looks like. Right, just doing the last one. realized in case you didn't notice I nipped the front of this off so it would fit better and I just realized I've done this one on backwards but that's all right we'll uh, 
We'll just say this is an homage to the French pilots. How about that? <laughs> yep, wouldn't have won the Battle of Britain without the three French, that much is certain. Anyway, um, so there we go. That's uh, the decals all on. Where's the other one? Um, so there's the ones on there. So what I'm going to do now is give this another lick of uh, gloss varnish to seal these and then we'll do a little bit more weathering uh, and then I think we can think about starting to unmask some of this stuff. So uh, I'll do the gloss varnish and then we'll come back for the weathering. Right, now I've got that varnished up again. Uh, I want to do a bit more weathering, but I think now is a good time to uh, take the rest of this masking tape off. Because there's a couple of bits that I'm going to have to like touch up with a brush. Uh, so I'm going to take the masking tape off, and then we'll do a little bit of touch up, and then one final coat of lacquer, and I think we'll be done. Let's get the masking tape off anyway. Right, I think that's the last one. Ugh. Get off, 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 off. So, <laughs> that's quite a lot of masking tape. Let's just get rid of this. Oh, oh. Those are our two frames. Now, like I said, I've got a little bit of finishing up to do. Uh, so, for example, I need to paint the top of the control column, uh, but I'll do that in a minute. The, what I want to do next is do some weathering. So, to do that, I'm actually going to do just a little bit of oil weathering, not a great deal. But let me show you. So, I'm going to use these Crawford and Black oil colours, and I'm only going to use one, really, more than anything else. And that's a little bit of black uh, brush. And so what I'm going to do is I'm not even going to bother taking it out of the tube, quite frankly. I'm going to put a little blob there, a little blob there, and then there, 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 there. Oh, and there, and then the same on the top of the wing. Like that. Now, this is an eyeshadow blender and applicator brush, but it's great for blending paint because that's basically what it's designed for. So we just go a 
like that. And this is why you do this in some respects over gloss because that's quite a lot there. That's actually way more than I really want. But by doing, just keep working it like that. You see? And we'll do the same on this side, just a little bit, because this side's actually a lot nicer. And then we'll do the tops of the wings. that and a fuselage Like that and that's all it takes now like I said I'm just going to touch up a few areas here and there with a the brush uh, then I'm going to hit this with some uh, lacquer matte lacquer and then I think we can think about putting it in the frame so I'll do all that and then we'll have a look at how we're going to actually frame this thing okay so I'm just getting ready to try and attach this to the frame. So this is the frame I've got. Uh, this is from Hobbycraft, you see that back there. But this is a shadow box frame, it's 20, 25 by 25, uh, the actual aperture. So I just wanted to lay it out quickly and make sure, and it actually looks like it's gonna fit pretty well. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take this out of the uh, package, or out of the wrapping, and open it up, and then try and figure out a way to attach the frames <laughs> to the back. Um, I'm hoping to use screws, but we'll see, we'll see. Uh, what I'm also gonna do is I've cut the end tab off of the box and I'm gonna put that on as well, just you know to identify it more than anything. Um, so let's get this out of the wrapping and we'll figure out if I've got any screws small enough to actually fix this thing down. If not, we'll have to think of something else. Right, uh, so let's lay this out again quickly. So we'll put that there. And this one here. And we'll put that one at the top there. And then this goes at the bottom, like that. So what I want to do is just measure everything and get it roughly where it needs to be and then and, and straight more than anything. So that's what I'm, I'm not really worried about where it is side to side. It's just as long as they're straight. So I'll just measure in. So if I say 15 mil there and that is straight. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna move it up slightly and then I'll put a little pencil mark at each place and then I know where to put the screws. So I'll put one there and I'll put one in the middle there and then one under there. That's going to be a fun one to get to. Like that. And then we can move that back down a bit. And that should be fine. And we'll do the other one. And we'll put a mark there. 
So there's not there's no weight to these things, so it's not like they need a lot of a lot to hold them down. It's just to uh, keep them in place more than anything. I'll put one in the middle, like that. This is going to be the tricky one. It's going to be this because the trouble is with this one is the um, these little studs whatever you want to call them, ejector pins, are um, way too small to get a screw into, so that one I might just have to glue on. I might just put that one with a touch of glue. Because, uh, say, these ones, I want to be able to screw them down so that they're, they're held securely, but that one I might just have to glue it on. So let's take these back over to the other bench and see if we can drill some holes in them. Right. So let's see if we can drill these out. I took the liberty of uh, marking each one that needs to have a hole in it so that I get the right ones. Uh, but let's see if we can do this. So what I want to try and do first is, see, I've got to hold this kind of awkwardly because some of the parts like the seat here, they actually protrude below the frame. So I can't just lay it flat as they'll it'll pop those out. So I've got to hold it. So what I'm going to try and do is get a, a mark in the middle. Which is easier said than done. Right, now we'll try and make a little pilot hole. It's nearly in the middle. <laughs> Good grief. Uh, right, let's see if we can open it up a little bit with a slightly bigger drill. Uh, like that. Okay, so I'll do the rest of these, um, drill the corresponding holes in the backboard, and hopefully we can screw this down. I'm pretty sure I've got some screws small enough that will fit this, because what I don't want to do is use a screw that's too big, because I don't want this to split, but I think I've got some screws small enough. So I'll drill out the rest of these holes, drill the ones in the back plate, and uh, see if I can get these screwed down. Okay, so I've just drilled out the holes, uh, just with a cordless drill <laughs> and so now let's get this mat board out of the way because we don't need that for a minute and this is where the fun's really going to start so I've got some little screws here and these are fairly tiny hopefully these will do I also managed to stick a drill bit in my finger earlier so that was fun right let's see if we can do this, and more importantly, if I've managed to drill these holes in the right place. <laughs> okay, so how are we going to do this? This is going to be really awkward to do this in front of the camera, but we'll have a go. Um, <laughs> this is never going to work in front of the camera. Got it, oh it has got it, that's nice. 
All right, let's see if we can get the others on. So that's the first one on. Could do with these screws being about half a millimetre longer. But, you know. All right, let's see if we can get this one in. So what I want from this last one is really just to hold it down flat. Because I say it's got it, it's quite secure. I just want to get it to not do that. So we'll put the last one in. Oh. So. Oh, it's fantastic. Very pleased with that. Yeah, nice and secure. Right, let's put the other one on. So, <laughs> one of them fitted. Let's see if the other one fits. Uh, so, we'll go for the middle one again. Uh, hang on. Oh, try putting it around the right way, you idiot. There we go. That's more like it. <laughs> I was just thinking, why do the holes line up? Because I'll put it on backwards. It's fine. Everything's fine. Right, we'll do the same again. We'll do the middle one first. Oh, trying to do this in front of the camera really is awkward. But there you go, the joys of YouTube. Get that started. Uh, that goes. Oh, I can't see where it's meant to go. There. Oh. That goes like that. Oh, I'm knocking the camera all over the place. Just talk about yourselves for a minute. I'm actually quite impressed with myself that I got all these holes to line up because <laughs> I really wasn't expecting it to. I mean, there's no reason why it shouldn't, but you've seen the way I build things. Things rarely go according to plan. And there we go. Oh, very pleased with that. Wonderful stuff. Okay, so what we've got to do now, let's get our mat board back in so we know where our edge is. Because what we've got to do now is attach this one and the, uh, the label. So I'm going to put the label down here like that and what I've got to do that is some Mod Podge because I think that's going to be the best option so I'm going to put a little dob of this on the back of here 
and we'll pop this down like that. So that works. And now the last thing we need to do, we'll just turn this round so you can see what I'm doing. Or at least, <laughs> so at least one of us knows what we're doing anyway. So this needs to go up at the top here. Like that. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to just put it down. But I've got a, if I can get one out of the box. I've got some cocktail sticks here. Come This is not a musical interlude. I'm, there we go. Oh, I'll just squeeze some of this out onto a little scrap of wood here. That's way, way too much. But that's fine, because in this particular instance, better than too much than not enough. And what I'm going to do is put a drop there and a drop there and there. Hopefully, that will stick. So we'll leave this to uh, let all that glue dry up. And then we'll uh, come back and put it back in the frame. Oh, this is all going much better than I'd anticipated. <laughs> right, uh, this all appears to be dry. Uh, you'll notice also I've, I've signed it. And the reason I've done that is because I think what I'm going to do with this when it's done, well, I'll tell you what I'm going to do when it's done, but anyway, let's finish putting it back together first. Uh, so the next thing we need to do is put this back in the frame. So let's just move that to one side slightly for a minute and bring the frame back in. I've left the frame partially wrapped in the cellophane so that it doesn't get dinged up. So we've got to take this piece out like that. Then we need to put the map frame back in like that. Then this goes in like that. And now we need to flip this over and carefully put this in. like that and then push these metal tabs down to hold it in place like that now there we go and I think with that we can uh, we can wrap this up. So here is our finished article. Uh, this was an interesting little project, actually. I've, I've seen other people do these, and uh, and uh, yeah, it's been fun to have a go at it myself. So um, I've been trying to figure out what to do with this next. And uh, as I briefly alluded to earlier, I have actually signed this, uh, which is. <laughs> Not not an act of hubris, but more, uh, I actually thought what I'm going to do with this is I'm actually going to auction this. So this will be a charity auction, and once again we'll be supporting uh, Models for Heroes, which is one of my favourite charities, uh, who do sterling work, uh, providing models and model-related equipment for um, serving personnel, veterans, first responders, you know, police, fire, ambulance crews, that kind of thing, uh, and do absolutely wonderful work. So there will be a link in the description to the auction on eBay, uh, which will be running for seven days. And at the end of that, whoever you know has the highest bid will uh, will receive this thing. So 
<laughs> so uh, yes, hopefully you'll all uh, you know put a little flutter on it and, and uh, raise some money for a good cause. Um, but in any case, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Uh, I'd like to take a moment as ever to thank my top tier patrons, Howard and Amy, for their continued support. Uh, much appreciated, as it is with all of my patrons. And if you wish to come and join them over on Patreon, then you are more than welcome. And of course, you're welcome to come and join us in the staff canteen on Facebook. So, once again, I hope you've all enjoyed this video, and we'll see you on the next one. Cheers. Bye.